So here we have benzene, ethylene, and acetylene. The chemical shift for benzene, that is in H NMR, looking at the uh, protons, it's between 6.5 to 8 parts per million. And the chemical shifts for the protons in ethylene is around 4.5 to 6.5. And the protons attached to an alkyne, like acetylene, it varies between 2 and 2.5. Now here's a question for you. Why is the chemical shift for acetylene much lower than for the protons in ethylene and benzene? Why is that? Now you might be wondering, the reason could be due to hybridization. The carbon atom of which the proton is attached to in acetylene is an sp carbon. But in a case of ethylene and benzene, the protons are attached to an sp2 carbon. So that's one difference between the two, but there's also something else. And there's something called diamagnetic anisotropy. And the idea behind that term is that with these molecules, when you place them in an applied magnetic field, the net magnetic field that the protons will experience may differ depending on where they're located in the molecule. So basically, you're going to have different magnetic fields at different points in space relative to these molecules. Now let's consider benzene first. I'm going to draw benzene like this. So benzene has three pi bonds, which is six pi electrons, and it has six hydrogen atoms. Now what we're going to do is we are going to apply an external magnetic field to this molecule. And we're going to call it B0. When you apply a magnetic field, any charged particles that are moving will begin to move in a circular path. The magnetic field will basically exert a magnetic force causing the charged particles to move in a circular path. And the pi electrons are free to move in the benzene ring. And so they're going to be circulating around that benzene ring. Now, in turn, hopefully you've taken physics at this point, you know that a moving charged particle create its own magnetic field, which is called an induced magnetic field. Now, that induced magnetic field is going to be opposite to the direction of the external magnetic field when this increases from zero to its current value. So at the center of the ring, the induced magnetic field generated by the rotating or the revolving electrons it's going to be opposite to the direction of the external magnetic field. And the induced magnetic field is going to travel in a circular path around the ring. So now we're going to focus on this proton here. We're going to focus on the net magnetic field that it experiences. Notice that the induced magnetic field and the external magnetic field, or the applied magnetic field, they're in the same direction. They're both pointed in the upward direction. So therefore, they're going to add up. So here is the applied magnetic field. Here is the induced magnetic field. And so if we sum it up to get the net magnetic field, it's going to be stronger at the presence or at the location of this proton. And so that's why the chemical shift of that proton is so high, is because the induced and the applied magnetic field are parallel to each other, thus creating a stronger effective magnetic field at that location. Now, let's consider the example of ethylene. The situation is similar. So here we have our external applied magnetic field. And at the center, the induced magnetic field is going to be in the opposite direction. And it's also going to follow a circular path. 
So let's focus on this proton here. So once again, you can see that the induced magnetic field and the applied magnetic field, they're in the same direction. So thus, the net magnetic field will be reinforced by those two individual parts. And so that's why this proton also appears at a relatively high chemical shift. Now, in the case of an alkyne, the situation is different. So let's draw acetylene as an example. So at the center, let's say this is the applied magnetic field. At the center of acetylene, the induced magnetic field is going to be opposite to the direction of the applied magnetic field. And so that part is pretty consistent. Now, let's focus on this proton. Notice the direction of the induced magnetic field and the applied magnetic field. They are anti-parallel to each other. So here is the applied magnetic field. Here is the induced magnetic field. So the net magnetic field is going to be very small. And so because the applied and the induced magnetic field, they oppose each other, this is a lot weaker. And so the chemical shift for this proton is going to be relatively low, between 2 and 2.5. And so now you know why it's at this low range. It's because the way the proton is oriented in space relative to the molecule. And also the fact that the applied magnetic field is in the opposite direction to the induced magnetic field. So that's the basic idea behind diamagnetic anisotropy. So just to review, just to make sure that you got everything down, the chemical shift will be at a low value if the applied magnetic field is in the opposite direction to the induced magnetic field, thus giving us a very weak net magnetic field. The chemical shift will be high if the opposite is true. That is, if the applied magnetic field and the induced magnetic field are in the same direction, giving us a stronger, effective net magnetic field. So that's what you want to take away from uh, this particular video. That's the lesson that is to be learned here. So the stronger the net magnetic field acting on the proton, the greater the chemical shift will be. The weaker the net magnetic field is, the lower the chemical shift of the protons will be in the HMR spectrum. Now, here we have a special molecule that really highlights the effect of diamagnetic anisotropy. And there's two chemical signals that you'll get for this molecule in an HMR spectrum. The first signal is around 9 ppm. This is positive 9. So this is to the left of the TMS signal. The second signal is actually a negative value, which is pretty rare. It's around negative 2 to negative 3 ppm. Now, there's two types of hydrogen atoms in this molecule. You have the 12 green hydrogen atoms and they're chemically identical to each other. They're in the same chemical environment. So they show up as one signal on the spectrum. And you have six red protons. Now notice that the red protons are in the interior of the molecule. The green protons are on the exterior. So which signal corresponds to which protons? So for instance, this signal at 9 ppm does it correspond to the green protons or the red ones? What would you say? Now, because the chemical shift is high, we know that the induced magnetic field has to be in the same direction as the applied magnetic field. Now, because the chemical shift is so low for this value, that means the applied magnetic field is in the opposite direction 
to the induced magnetic field. Now, for molecules that look similar to benzene, like this one, at the center, the induced magnetic field is going to be opposite to the direction of the applied magnetic field. Outside of the ring, the induced magnetic field will be in the same direction as the applied magnetic field. So the green protons will have a signal of 9 ppm. The red protons will have a signal of somewhere between negative 2 to negative 3 ppm. So that's what you want to keep in mind. So when you have these structures, the protons on the outside, like the protons that are on the outside of the benzene ring, they're going to have a high chemical shift. The protons on the inside, they will have a very low chemical shift due to the different directions of the induced magnetic field around this molecule.